afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our annual speaker series for Econ Games. My name is Dr. Darshit Patel. I'm a faculty member at the University of, uh, University of Kentucky. I teach economics and I'm also a co-founder of the Econ Games. I'll let my colleague, uh, Dr. Albarani introduce himself as well. Hi, everyone. Really excited to have you here. Uh, my name is Dr. Abdul Albarani. I'm an associate professor of economics at Northern Kentucky University, and I'm excited to be part of the Econ Games for this year. Um, we have a lot of amazing things coming uh, ahead of us. Uh, Dr. Patel will talk about some of those details. Uh, before he talks about that, I would love it if we all use the chat function and create an engaging in environment. So to get us kind of started, uh, please feel free to use the chat to tell us where you're connecting from, whether a university or a location. So we just see how uh, how far everybody's coming from. So with that said, thank you all for being here. This is going to be an exciting uh, presentation. Darshak, the floor is yours. Sure. Uh, so those of you who are new to the idea of Econ Games, I want to give you a quick background. Uh, Econ Games uh, initially was focused on helping students uh, work on a data challenge. So where students could in eventually apply their data skills and economic skills in solving a economic or data problem for a corporate uh, uh, company or government-based agencies as well. Uh, with that, we've also grown uh, from that. And now we also offer a summer data camp to help students uh, build their data skills in different uh, resources, so software skills and programming skills. And also now we're really excited to start our speaker series, which the idea is to show you how your data skills and economic skills could relate to a real world labor market or also graduate programs. So our data uh, the data challenge will usually happen in spring uh, of every semester. So watch out for a link or some information coming out to you soon. And uh, we'll also be sending out information on uh, the summer data camp sometime in spring as well. For now, we'll be sending you lots of different uh, opportunities to come join us of a speaker series, starting with today, where we're really excited to have three amazing research analysts from uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. And I will engage, I would uh, motivate you to continue engaging them to learning about their story and seeing how they progress from the university life and transitioned into the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. So with that said, let's uh, welcome the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland and I'll pass the, uh, the mic to them. Good morning, everyone. My name is Bazang Kang. I am a research analyst here at the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. I've been here, um, this is my, I'm starting my fourth year as a research analyst. And um, here I work with two economists, a macro labor, well, sorry, I work with a labor economist and a housing finance economist. And then I am Cornelius. Uh, I am a research analyst here as well, working with a macroeconomist and then a banking and finance economist. Uh, I graduated from Ohio State University last year. And so, yeah, so this is my, I'm starting my second year here at the bank. And I'm Isabel Brasuela. I graduated a year ago from the University of Kentucky, well, May 2020. So I've been at the Federal Reserve a little over a year and I work with the regional analysis team at the bank. Okay, so I, uh, I will go ahead and start presenting. Sorry about that. I, yeah, give me one second.
All right, we can see the PowerPoint now. Okay, perfect. All right, so today we're gonna to talk to y'all about um, being a research analyst. Um, so I guess we have some slides prepared for introduction. So we'll kind of go ahead and do that again and give you a bit more information about ourselves. Like I said, my name is Isabel Brizuela. I graduated from the University of Kentucky in May of 2020. Um, my major was economics. Uh, the most recent research I've been working on has been related to the housing market. So we documented the evolution of the housing market throughout the pandemic. So when the pandemic hit the housing market, kind of was brought to a standstill and um, was pretty surprising how fast it rebounded. So we kind of looked at how strong demand was, the lack of availability of homes and how that kind of impacted prices. And I'd say my favorite part of the position so far has just been um, monitoring real-time economic conditions just because it's so relevant and it has an impact on policy, which makes the job pretty fulfilling. And so again, I'm Cornelius. Um, my research interests are in applied microeconomics and macroeconomic policy, and then the sort of work that I'm involved in here at the Fed. Uh, I work with one economist studying universal basic income, and so we're really just trying to find out sort of what would the effects on the economy be if that policy was implemented, and then also what sort of taxes would need to be implemented or other changes to the budget would need to be put in place to make that actually like a feasible thing to do. And then with my other economist, uh, he's in the banking and finance group, we study decentralized finance, which is also called DeFi. And this is sort of mainly focused in the cryptocurrency space, and it's trying to come up with alternatives to the traditional finance space. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to get a loan, instead of going to a bank like Chase or JP Morgan or something, you would go to another peer, so another person. And so, yeah, so it's alternatives to traditional finance that are more decentralized. There's no sort of like main entity controlling it. And my favorite part of being an RA is the, flex, uh, the flexibility that comes with this position. So our, we have certain responsibilities that are sort of set in stone, like supporting economists in their research but then we're also able to sort of branch out to pursue our own interests or to get involved in things that you know, we're more interested in getting involved in. So for example, outreach and talking to you guys, not every RA has to do this. It's something that we can volunteer to do. And I really like that I have the ability to volunteer and talk to people. So yeah. Does anything you muted? Thank you. <laughs> Hello again. My name is Bazen King. Um, I graduated from Rochester Institute of Technology with degrees in applied math and economics. Um, uh, my primary in, uh, research interest is uh, macro labor. So I previously worked with a macro labor economist, but pre presently I work with a labor economist and a housing finance economist. Um, some of the projects I've worked on have been, so one of them has been uh, looking at the um, assessing the impact of the credit check ban on the labor market. Um, so for this project, uh, essentially policymakers were worried. So a number of different states have passed policies that um, ban credit checks for employment. So uh, policymakers were worried that for people who have low credit, they're unable to get jobs because they have low credit. And if they can't get a job, then they're unable to get, like to fix their credit essentially. And the concern is that people get stuck in this cyclical cycle of poverty. And so for this project, my, uh, the economist I was working on was interested in looking at um, uh, what these effects, so, uh, so states have passed credit check bans and he was interested in seeing if the, uh, the laws that were banning the credit checks had the effect on the labor market that we hope to see. Additionally, I worked on another project looking at um, using CoStar land data. So for this, we were matching land and property transaction data. Um, primarily for determining the option value of land and when investors decide to develop. And more recently, a project that I'm currently working on is using the consumer credit panel. So for this project, we're interested in understanding migration patterns pre and post COVID, um, pre and post the pandemic starting. So my favorite part of this position um, has been the exposure to research. So when I started out as an RA, I was mostly interested in um, labor and development. And obviously the Federal Reserve doesn't really have economists that do development uh, research, 
Um, so I have been able to attend seminars and work with economists who do various different types of research. So with that, I've been able to um, broaden my exposure to research and learn about just you know, how multifaceted economics is. Um, and also with that, my research interests have also evolved to now include macro labor. So next, we're going to talk a bit more about the Federal Reserve um, system as a whole, and then kind of segue into the RA position. So um, the Federal Reserve uh, pretty much serves the public interest as a nation central bank. Um, the Fed is comprised of 10, sorry, of 12 regional reserve um, banks uh, that operate independently with oversight from the Board of Governors. So we have our 12 districts, and then we also have the Board of Governors in DC. And so the regional districts um, conduct research for the economy as a whole, but also specifically for the geographical areas that the district is comprised of. Um, so for example, the, uh, the Cleveland Fed is in the fourth district, um, which covers uh, a few states, including Ohio, Pennsylvania, um, uh, parts of Pennsylvania, Kentucky, and the West Virginia Panhandle. Um, uh, Congress has given the Fed uh, the two main, two main primary goals, which are to promote price stability and to uh, maximize and to, um, to maximize employment. And this is often called a dual mandate. So the FOMC is the Fed's um, body for set in monetary policy. It's comprised of, comprised of the Fed governors and the Federal Reserve Bank president. So I'm sure you might be more familiar with the FOMC because they vote on monetary policies and things of that nature. So specifically for the RA role. So, um, this is for the Federal Reserve, how the RA role is structured for the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland specifically, although most um, branches do something similar. So for the, it's some branches call it the research assistant role, research analyst, we call it the research analyst, research assistant, it's pretty much the same thing. So pretty much RAs at the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland work alongside two to three um, PhD economists. And as a part of this position, we learn about the ins and outs of creating and economic research. And one cool part of this position or of our um, district specifically is how, you know, how RAs are able to work with economists or how RAs are assigned to specific economists um, because this allows for more mentorship and for a chance to get to know your economists a bit more. So in other branches, for example, and for example, RAs might be assigned to a, the microgroup, so a specific group, for example, so the microgroup is a macro group, and you're a resource for all of the economists within that group. But here we're assigned to specific economists and we work with them on their research, which kind of allows for a bit more continuity and also for a bit more mentorship um, opportunities. So additionally, RAs learn, um, RAs develop skills in human capital. So as a, as a research analyst, you get a chance to take classes. Typically, most people take math or econ classes. Um, for people, yeah, math and econ classes, which we might go in a bit more detail with later. Um, and then RAs typically spend two to three years in this role. And many RAs go on to pursue a, a graduate degree in economics. So typically um, a PhD in economics or, in a, um, or some people end up doing something in a closely related field. So the RA responsibilities for uh, fall under these four main buckets. So um, we support research economists, as was mentioned. We also support the FOMC um, process. So um, about eight times a year, the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland um, uh, part partakes in the FOMC meetings. And so before our president goes to the FOMC, here at our branch, at, at our district, um, she is uh, briefed. So we prepare, uh, the economists prepare, uh, give a presentation. And for the, a lot of the um, data analysis and the visual, visual, visualizations that go into those presentations, that's primarily what the RAs do. Um, RAs also support bank publications. So a lot of this, uh, which includes either co uh, commentaries or working papers. So commentaries are shorter research projects that are meant for a wider audience. And typically um, working papers are, uh, um, a longer research project that are meant for a peer review journal. So given the nature of the RA position and that RAs aren't here for very long, typically RAs are more likely to co-author commentaries than they are working papers. And lastly, we also update bank indicators and data. So these are forward-facing things that we find on our 
um, things that you would find on our website. So um, yeah, we update models published on our website. So things like um, median CPI, inflation expectations, things of that nature. And it's not listed on the slide, but RAs also have other tasks like uh, Cornelia has kind of alluded to. So, um, you know, you can be a part of the recruitment committee, some other, you know, tasks that RAs are able to get involved in. So, um, yeah. Okay, so in terms of the qualifications for being a research analyst, um, typically people who are in this position have a bachelor's degree in economics or another closely related field, so statistics, math, or computer science. Um, and then typically before starting this position, um, RAs have coding experience in at least one language. So at least one of the ones below Stata, MATLAB, R, Python. And then um, the bank also looks for a pretty strong math background. So multivariate calculus, um, linear algebra, or other upper level math classes. So this link is um, a link to the AEA's website and they have recommended math classes to prepare you for graduate school. Um, but like it was mentioned before, you can always take classes while you're a research analyst. So if you don't have the strongest math background, there's always the opportunity to kind of expand um, your math backgrounds. And finally, um, it's preferred that uh, research analysts have previous research experience, um, especially uh, economics. So uh, the regional analysis team at the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland is tasked with monitoring the regional economy. So the regional economy for the fourth district, which is the Cleveland Federal Reserve, it's all of Ohio, um, Western Pennsylvania, Eastern Kentucky, and the Northern Panhandle of West Virginia. So the regional team also has a few RAs and I'm one of them. And our job is a little bit different from the typical RA position. Um, so half of the time, we are also assigned to economist, um, a policy economist who we assist um, with research, with the opportunities to co-author just like the other RAs. Um, but we're also assigned a briefing economist who briefs Loretta. And with that other economist, we spend the other half of our time monitoring real-time economic conditions. So monitoring the regional economy. Um, we like to back up the data that we have with anecdotes. So um, we do that by contact calls, advisory councils, and surveys. So we talk to a lot of industry leaders. Um, and firms from as small as a few people to firms that have a national footprint, just to kind of get an idea of what exactly is going on in the regional economy to kind of back up the data that we have. And then all of this information that we collect, um, we use it for a wide variety of things, but uh, mainly for the, the beige book. So the beige book is um, basically a summary of economic conditions and that's published eight times a year by the Federal Reserve System. So eight times a year, each of the reserve banks um, or each district submits their submission of the beige book, which is just the summary of the economic conditions in that district. And they're all compiled into the one beige book. So it has the conditions in each district plus a national summary. Um, so the regional team writes the Cleveland Federal Reserve submission to the Beige Book. And so the RAs on our team help write that. So for example, my two sections are construction and real estate and professional business services. So I talk to a lot of contacts in those fields and track a lot of data in those industries. And then I'll um, draft our Beige Book sections for the Cleveland submission. And then we also use a lot of this um, real-time data to uh, support the FOMC briefing. So similar to the other RAs, uh, data visualization um, and stuff like that. All right, so now you guys know a good bit about what being an RA might entail. And let's say that you're interested and think that this position might be for you. How do you go about actually finding current openings? Uh, to help with that, uh, we made Fed Econ Jobs, and it's a resource intended to make it easy for interested candidates to find research jobs anywhere within the Fed system. And it does this in two ways. Uh, first, it aggregates job listings from all Fed districts, and the, that includes the regional banks and the board in DC. And just a little bit of a personal anecdote here. 
Uh, when I was applying for this job, like to be a research analyst, I knew that I wanted to live in Cleveland, but I also knew that these programs are pretty selective. And so, of course, I applied to the Cleveland Fed, but also to <laughs> every other Fed district, so all the regionals and the board. And I mean, the worst thing that would happen is that, you know, I wouldn't get in anywhere. The best thing that happens is I get to be a research analyst at Cleveland. And then, you know, within the middle, being a research analyst anywhere, you know, that's a great gig. So, yeah, so I applied to all of these banks. And, and at the time, I didn't know about Fed Econ jobs. And so navigating 13 different webs and something different, that was sort of challenging. And so if I'd known about Fed Econ jobs, it would have all of these job listings all on the same page, all in the same format, and it just makes it way easier. And then all that you really need to spend time on is your application, not figuring out how to manage all of these different websites. So Fed Econ Jobs, great website, highly recommend you check it out. And then the other benefit of Fed Econ Jobs is that it gives you sort of a general rundown of how, how the hiring cycle works for every bank. And so each bank is on a bit of a different calendar. Uh, some start there, like sort of specific information on what those timings are is really only something that you can get from talking to recruiters from each bank. And so Fed Econ Jobs is great because it takes that information, it puts it on the website, everybody can see it, totally public, accessible for everyone. And so that is really useful information as well. So yeah, so if you're interested in one of these positions, definitely check out Fed Econ Jobs. And next slide, please. So yeah, so I know that has been a ton of information to absorb. So we have a couple of resources here just to recap what we talked about. Uh, the first link here directs you to the RA page on the Cleveland Fed website, and that will tell you more about the position. Uh, recap the qualifications that we talked about earlier. It'll give some examples of research that research analysts have been directly involved in. And then it'll also give you some information about Cleveland specifically. And then there's a frequently asked questions page there as well. And so most, but not all of the info that we covered is recapped there. So you'll have the slides at the end of this presentation, and then you can also check out that page as well. And then lastly, uh, we are currently recruiting for research analysts and interns here in Cleveland. Uh, you can find these postings on Fed Econ Jobs or at this second link here, it says to apply, visit that long link. So you can check that out. Uh, we're recruiting until the end of October, but I would really encourage you guys to apply by October 15th. And that's just so that there's plenty of time for us to see your application and schedule interviews in a way that's convenient for both parties. And we do look at every application. So even if you don't think that you're totally qualified, I really encourage you to just go ahead and apply, you know, put yourself out there. The worst thing that happens is you don't get it, but the best thing that happens is you get to be research analyst here. So yeah, definitely everybody encourage you to apply. And that's it for me. Thanks, Cornelius. Um, so my name is Zan, I work alongside the RAs in our education and outreach department. And I'm going to be facilitating our um, Q&A session. So I thought maybe we'd be fun to get everybody thinking about questions. So if you have a phone with you, um, if you wouldn't mind taking out your phone, uh, Abdullah and Jenny and Darshak, that includes you as well. Um, so we're going to do some poll questions to see what you might want to learn more about from the RAs. So I'm going to share my screen here. All right, so everybody should see you're going to go to um, it's www.kahoot.it and then you'll go ahead and enter this game pin as well as your name. And I'll put it in the chat too. And then just to confirm, um, Abdullah, can you see my screen? <laughs> I can see your screen, yes. Okay, perfect, thank you. Oh, 
So I'll give it like another minute, but essentially what's going to happen is um, if you get kicked off at any point, you can always rejoin. Like I said, I put the game pin in the website um, in the chat. So um, what it's going to happen is you'll see a slide pop up on the screen and you'll be able to select which question you would like to ask of the RAs. Um, if there's a question that isn't listed, that's a Okay, um, you can always type it in the chat. I have that open, so I'll make sure to check the chat periodically uh, in case any. All right, so we've got about 20, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. But like I said, you can pop in at any point um, during this game. All right, so you're going to select one of the following that you would like to ask our RA panel. So these are our questions. Did you consider other career paths outside of research? What does a typical day look like for you? Which class or classes from college have you leveraged the most as an RA? Or what is something you've enjoyed working on as an RA? Please select which one you would like to hear about. All right, so it looks like the winner is what does a typical day look like for you? So why don't we start with Bazanking if you'd like to answer that first. Yeah, um, so a typical day varies, but um, most of the time I log onto my computer um, and I like check my calendar, check my email, and then so usually I'm working on a project, a few projects for my economist. So then I just continue I have been working on. And then sometimes I have, so for one of my economists, we have weekly meetings on Fridays. For the other economists, we just check in. Like we might talk every, like, I don't know, maybe a few hours in a day. Or we mostly just like um, communicate through Teams. And then if we need to have a meeting, we'll do that. Or like I might send results and then she'll give me feedback or I'm sending emails with results and things of that nature. But for the most part, um, most of my time is like sitting in front of a computer coding in some statistical package, working with data, doing some data analysis. Um, and then also in the past, I supported the um, FOMC briefing. So like when there's a briefing period and that takes president, um, I don't currently do that anymore, but um, so it just varies based on what I have going on. So briefing weeks were very busy and mostly that's what you work on. Um, and then also if your economist is presenting or if they have a presentation coming up, then, you know, that becomes the main focus. So it kind of varies and it's kind of like, um, there's a lot of like change week to week, um, but for the most part, a lot of data analysis and working with data. That stays consistent. Thanks. How about um, Isabel, since your job's a little bit different? So my day is different <laughs> every day, but um, during briefing for me, um, we have, I'll be sitting in on business advisory councils, traveling to the different cities in the district when it's not COVID. Um, right now it's just Zoom meetings. So um, writing up meeting summaries of what um, our different contexts at an advisory council meeting. So during briefing time, it's really chaotic for the regional team in terms of, um, Councils. We also are running our surveys during that time to have stuff to present to Loretta for the FOMC, um, calculating our diffusion indexes. Um, so there's a lot to do during briefing. Um, when there is some quiet time between briefing, that's when I'll get to um, do some research to help the other economists. So I support so the end my days are similar um, to just coding and data analysis, sending results back and forth between that economist. But unfortunately, there's not always that much time in between cycles. And during the briefing cycle, there's so much we're trying to do to monitor what's going on that there isn't much time to do other research outside of that. Thanks. And then Cornelius, did you want to add anything? Yeah, so I think my days are also pretty different. It's like that flexibility that I was talking about earlier. So a lot of the time I'm working on outreach stuff with Zan here. So <laughs> coming up with, you know, ideas for what we can get involved in next. So coming and doing 
econ games, of course. We're working on another program called the Economic Scholars Program, trying to figure out how to, you know, get undergraduates more experience in research. Uh, sometimes I'm going to career fairs at different universities or, you know, just talking to students one on one. Um, so doing all of that great outreach stuff. Uh, other times I'm working directly with my economist. So right now I'm going in actually into the bank about every Tuesday and Thursday. And those days are almost entirely dedicated to just working with my economist on the current project. So it's like, I'll be in his office, we'll be coding together. We'll be trying to come up with a model together, trying to figure out new data sources to use. And then also I am involved in, with the other work on cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance, that stuff is moving so fast that a lot of the time I'm just trying to like read news articles I'm um, trying to like read new papers that are coming out to keep up with the pace at which that scene is developing. So there's a lot of reading there, but it's reading that I'm really interested in. So it's very enjoyable. And then, so those are all of the really active things that I have to work on. And then when there is downtime, which unfortunately isn't as uh, frequent as I might like, uh, I'm studying. So I'm taking math classes right now while working. So I'm studying to keep up in that math class. And then other times I'm just focusing on improving my coding abilities so that if we do have a project in the future that's maybe more demanding in some area that I'm not, you know, totally skilled in yet, I can work on those skills and then be prepared and then do some more interesting research down the road. So yeah, it's a lot, <laughs> but it's fun. So, so speaking of classes, why don't we um, talk about the second most voted question. So which classes from college have you been able to leverage the most in your position? It's all you, Cornelius. You want to start? Yeah. So I think that picking just one specific class is a little bit difficult because a lot of the things that we're doing in research, it's like we're working with people that already have their PhDs. So these are like professors, these are economists. They are doing really demanding, like really cutting edge stuff. And so none of the classes that I took during my undergrad are at the level that they're at. So I can't really help out too much like on those really specific cutting edge economics research things. But throughout undergrad, I had to learn, you know, like how to manage deadlines, how to stay productive, how to get into good routine, how to handle, you know, having a lot of things on my plate and still, you know, like mental health, you know, not getting burnt out. So just the actual act of taking classes in undergrad and especially difficult classes helped me develop a lot of good habits that are paying off a ton as a research analyst. So for me, it's tough to pick just one specific class but just actually taking difficult classes, that helped me a lot to you know, be able to handle the workload now. And then eventually once I take like higher level econ classes, higher level math classes, I'll be able to really contribute. Thank you. Um, how about you, Bazanking? Do you wanna talk about that question as well? Um, I think Cornelius pretty much nailed that. Um, the only thing I would add is as far as classes, uh, I think Although while like I can't think of a specific class that I would say has helped me the most right now, I think definitely having had classes where I have exposure to research. So, um, or in, I know some schools you might do a capstone or something like that. Uh, but I know just like whatever, you know, opportunities that um, allowed me to like just engage in research uh, allowed me to think uh, critically about an economic research question that I came up with with the research process um, or just to get more familiar with the literature so for example, in my immediate macro class, we had to do a paper for that class. So I would say definitely just being able to think about research um, and just like understand how economists approach research and how they think about research is really um, useful and helpful in this position. Perfect. And then before we go to the next poll, Isabel, did you want to add anything? No, I think they summed that one up perfectly. All right, we'll go to our next, okay. We'll go to our next poll then. So we have a set of four more questions. So we have, what is something you wish you knew before going into economics? What led you to your research interest or interests? What opportunities outside of class did you pursue to prepare for the role? And how did you know that you wanted to pursue research? All right, so let's see. I think, yeah, the most one, what opportunities outside of class did you pursue to prepare for this role? So Isabel, you wanna start? 
Yeah, so um, my senior year, I had a research assistant position with one of my professors. And I think that that's probably the one thing that um, probably prepared me the most. I, that's where I um, learned how to, that was my first time coding, honestly, in that position. So I think that, um, like we just said, I mean, there's only so much that you can get from classes that you can apply to some of the research that these economists are doing, but just having the past experience as a research assistant and getting, um, they're starting to get a grasp on coding and how, um, how papers are kind of started in the process of research. So I would say that that research assistant um, position my senior year definitely was the most beneficial for me. And then Cornelius, would you like to answer? Yeah, so I would definitely echo what Isabel said. Um, being a research assistant, uh, I did that for two of my professors, one in my sophomore year, one in my, my junior year. And, and it's very, it's almost identical to what it's like being a research analyst. Like you're like having consistent meetings with this person, uh, you're helping them out on their research, they're giving you tasks, and then you're working on them, completing them, providing feedback. This is essentially what a research analyst does at the Fed. So being a research assistant to some of my professors during undergrad, that was really excellent. Excuse me. That was really excellent preparation for this one, for sure. I think Bazanking was having sound issues, but I'm not sure if she's back on yet. I don't see her. Um, OK, so just going off of that question, I guess while at the Fed, so I know that we have a mentor program and other development opportunities. And I know Cornelius, you spoke about taking math classes, um, but are there other opportunities that you've taken advantage of in your current role to also help you for your career after being in? Yeah, definitely. I think that the resources that we have here are really helpful and that's specifically like the library <laughs> uh the cleveland fed and the whole regional feds uh, um they sort of connect all of their libraries together i mean this is common with most libraries but so say like on programming or on you know high level economic stuff and just reading them working through them you know on my own is very beneficial. It's, it's difficult to do because it requires a lot of discipline to you know keep working through it, but just sort of taking my learning into my own hands and teaching myself the things that you know I've heard are useful, are very are valuable. That has been very beneficial, and I know that will help me you know after being a research analyst. Thanks. And then Bazanking, I see you rejoined us. So do you want to answer what opportunities outside of class did you pursue to prepare for this role? Yeah, um, so I did two summer programs as an undergrad. So the summer after my sophomore year, I did um, uh, the summer research initiative at the University of Maryland. So there I got to work with um, a uh, economics professor on development economics research. I was able to get more exposure to economics research that, that way because I knew that like I liked econ economics, but I you know, I was intrigued by the research questions, um, but it was cool to just like get a first take on like economic research. And then um, seeing that that was a fun experience for me and I really enjoyed like, you know, getting to work on research. Obviously like after your sophomore year of college, it wasn't too much I could contribute majorly to this project. It was just more like learning a lot. Um, I realized that economic research was interesting to me. So the summer after my junior year of undergrad, I participated in the um, American Economic um, Association summer, um, summer program. And so for this program, we not only took classes, but we also had a, um, we were also able to work on a research project. So that was also a great opportunity to work on a research project um, and just to have more guidance guidance with uh, with the professor, um, more exposure, and just like also for me reaffirm that research was still interesting to me. Thanks, and um, I think we'll go to our next question. So what is something you wish you knew before going into economics? Isabel, do you wanna start? Um. I have to think about this one a little bit. <laughs> so, 
something I wish you knew. I think that, well, just going into this position in general, I was kind of afraid because I wasn't, um, I didn't have some of, I wasn't as experienced as some of the other research analysts. So I would say something I wish I knew before going into economics is that everyone so far has struggled no matter how much experience that they've had so far, at least in my experience, um, the other research analysts, even if you do have a ton of experience, everyone's gonna struggle and everyone's gonna have a hard time. I mean, it can be a challenging field at times. So I guess just, I wish I had known that I'm not the only one struggling, like other people are gonna have to work hard at this. So yeah, I think that's something that would have been nice to have in the back of my mind. Um, and Cornelius, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, I really like what Isabel was saying there and that like everybody struggles at some point, you know, like within this career path and something, I guess I struggled with a lot like earlier when I was trying to decide if I wanted to go into this, like going into economics and then figuring out how to actually go into economics is that like, it's very important to separate your self-worth from the, like, I guess, accomplishments or the activities or the things that you're involved in. So like, for example, like if you struggle in a class and like you're not getting good grades in a class, that doesn't mean that like you're bad or that you're a failure you're not smart or anything like that. Like, it just means that you're pushing yourself and you're doing hard things and that's good. <laughs> so I, I would have probably been a lot I would probably still be in the same place that I am now, but I would have gotten here a lot more smoothly if I hadn't been so hard on myself, like in the in the earlier parts of this. So yeah, definitely don't let your self worth be based off of like your grades or your positions or anything else like that. Like separate them. Great. So I think we'll go to our last poll. So if everybody gets their um, phones out again. This is the last one we have. Um, so our new questions are, what programming languages are helpful for the RA role? After leaving the Fed, what career path will you pursue? What distinguishes the ideal RA candidate? And what is the most challenging thing about pursuing a career in economics? Okay, so oh, it looks like we have a tie. So we'll start with what distinguishes the ideal RA candidate. And let's go to Bazanking first. Um, so I'll actually turn this over to Cornelius because he does a lot of recruiting right now. So I feel like he might, you know, have a lot to say about this. <laughs> this is this is a hard question it's a good question but it's a hard question to answer because there's a lot of different metrics that we're looking for in RA candidates you know and so like there's a lot of different ways to distinguish yourself I would say the first one I guess I can break it down into like when we're looking at applications and then when we're interviewing people so when we're looking at applications the things that distinguish people a lot um, I would definitely say like course rigor. So like if you're taking difficult classes and doing that like consistently, that's good because it shows that, you know, you're pushing yourself, you're like driven to learn. Um, so yeah, that's really good. We really like to see that. Uh, the GPA, it does matter, but it doesn't matter the most. So like as long as your GPA is above like the minimum requirement that we put in the posting, like we'll look at everybody. So your GPA isn't the end all be all. I would say the coursework that you take is important for when we're just like screening applications. But then once we get into the interview phase, it's more like, so we ask people to sort of recall what they learned in their classes. So not just getting a good grade, but you know, remembering what you learned, being able to explain what you learned is very helpful. Um, and then things like friendliness, people wanna work with nice people um intellectual curiosity so when you're really eager to learn more about economics when you demonstrate that you do want to do research those are really important things and then also it is important for you to be interested in pursuing a phd in economics so it's not like you have to decide this right away or like 
you have to decide it very early on because it's a very big thing to decide. But being open to the idea, being eager to learn more about that whole thing, that whole thing of getting a PhD, that is something that we look for as well. And yeah, there's there's a lot more to talk about for what we're looking for in candidates, but if I had to boil that boil it down the most, that's what I would say. I think the question that was in the chat sort of goes along with this. So what what's the application process like? And do you have any recommendations for completing the application? Yeah, so the application process, we have these postings all posted on Fedeek on Jobs, check it out. Um, you have to submit your resume, transcript, and then I believe it's a writing sample or a cover letter. I mean, either way, submit both. That's what we prefer. Um, and then that's really it. So you submit those things and then we usually see the applications, you know, a week or two later. And then we, like the, there's a hiring committee. So we review all of these applications and then we select people to interview based off of that. And there's only one interview. We don't do multiple rounds. And then, and what recommendations do you have about completing the application? I would say the thing, how long should a writing sample or a portion of our writing sample be? Yeah, that's what my recommendation was gonna be about. I would definitely say, I'm not sure if a writing sample is required or not, but definitely encourage you to submit one and preferably submit one that demonstrates that you have some experience in doing economics research. So maybe if you weren't able to be a research assistant with a professor, maybe say like in an econometrics class, you had to write a paper, you had to write a regression, do some summary statistics, anything along those lines that shows that you've used statistical software and you've applied it to economics questions, that's what we're really, really looking for in a writing sample. So that's what I would recommend recommend and how long should it be um that isn't too it doesn't matter too much all that matters is that it shows that you've done some statistical software and some economics that's what we really hope to see perfect so um i think we'll go on to our last question which i'll ask all three of you which was what is the most challenging thing about pursuing a career in economics? So let's start with um, Byzanking. Um, wow, what is the most challenging thing? So yeah, it's been, um, if I have to just choose one thing, I don't know, that's hard to pinpoint, but I guess I'll just talk about my overall experience. So, um, started out in undergrad. Uh, so I was a math and econ major, as I mentioned. Um, and a lot of my classes, can y'all still hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, because, okay, things were frozen. Okay, so yeah, so in a lot of my classes, um, and as y'all might know, economics is not a very like diverse field as currently is. So in a lot of both my math and econ classes, there wasn't like, it wasn't very, there just wasn't a lot of representation for like, you know, black female economists or like um, just um, individuals of color in my classes and like economists that would come and give seminars or professors that I had. So for me, like during this experience, it was just really hard to like picture myself being an economist on this, on this journey because I hadn't really, uh, I hadn't seen many economists that looked like me. Um, but I think like, you know, the more I've gone to like, I've, I've taken um, place in programs and like gotten to know more people, like, you know, gotten to network and know more people in the profession. I've like been able to like find those people like through the AA summer programs and things like that. Um, but initially I think there was some feeling of isolation, like feeling like, you know, like, I don't know, just like mostly just feeling isolated and not feeling like I belonged in the profession. Um, so I would say that was fairly challenging. And then obviously like the math classes were also challenging. Um, and, and then being in this position, so I did take a few classes um, after I started the RA position. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's what I would say as far as challenges go. Thanks. Um, Isabel, do you wanna take, take that one as well? Sure. Um, I guess I agree about, um, I guess sometimes it can be a little daunting, the lack of, I know it's getting better, but the lack of women in economics, which there's been a huge push for. Um, but like on my team, there's not a single woman economist. Um, we have um, an analyst. So there's me and one other woman on my team, but it's pretty much 
call and then um, which there's been a push and I think that's getting better but yeah sometimes that can be a little bit daunting um, but then I would agree the math classes and getting through those that can be really challenging I've taken some classes since starting um, and they can get really frustrating and challenging and also just learning new languages so I came in knowing Stata um, but learning R and other uh, coding languages. It's always easier once you know one, but still gets a little frustrating and challenging at times learning the new languages. Thanks. Um, and then Cornelius, do you want to uh, answer that one? Um, honestly, I think that Bazan King and Isabel answered it really well. I don't have anything additional to add. OK, so then. Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, could I just add one last thing? Okay, so um, yeah, since we're talking about challenges, so this past fall, so fall 2020, um, I applied for econ PhD programs um, and it was a very grueling process. Um, and, but anyway, so the process was over, I got in to schools and I made a decision of a school I wanted to go to, but then, something personal came up. So I had to defer grad school for another year. So just another addition to say that like, you know, there's a lot of like twists and turns in this journey to get in an econo economics PhD. Um, it's not a smooth sailing journey, but like if it's something that you really want, it is possible and it's feasible. Thank you. Um, great advice. <laughs> Um, so then the last thing that I'll put out there is, as Cornelius mentioned earlier, the Cleveland Fed is working on a program that actually um, Dr. Alborani is a part of. It's called the Economic Scholars Program. It's an event that's going to be for undergraduate students. Um, so basically, it's going to be a research conference for undergraduate students where our peer review board, our discussants, our chairs are all undergrads. Um, it's going to be taking place in April of 2022, but we are hosting some info sessions, Cornelius and I are, um, at the end of September and October. So if you're interested in registering for one, I've put that link in the chat, and I would highly encourage all of you to look into this opportunity because I think it aligns with a lot of what we heard today from our RAs about taking advantage of the opportunities in undergrad that can help you move into positions like the RA. Um, and with that, I think I'm done. So I'll turn it back over to our host. All right. Uh, thank you all. This was uh, an amazing uh, presentation. I, as a faculty advisor, benefit greatly because now I know how to advise my students. Uh, but some of my students are in this audience, and I could tell from some of the communications privately that they have shared with me that now they feel like they... Um, are actually qualified to apply. So thank you for making it uh, accessible for our students. There's a couple of things that came up through the discussion that I think are important for us to talk about how to provide the support for. So for instance, you talked about the importance of learning uh, coding languages. Uh, a lot of institutions don't have that uh, accessible for their students. So the Econ Games, uh, does have a summer data camp where we provide training in Stata, R, Tableau data visualization. Um, and then we also have a spring semester uh, experiential learning conference where you get to work on a real life project. So keep an eye on those items. Uh, our goal is to make sure that you are equipped to be able to qualify for these positions that uh, a lot of you are, are seeking. So experiential learning is part of it. Building your network is the other part. And all of you being here, are you are already investing in that. So uh, thanks to the Cleveland uh, Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, we really appreciate you being part of this uh, program. Thank you to the RAs for your candid uh, discussion. And um, we look forward to future interactions. Good luck, everybody. Um, if you're on social media, connect with us uh, at the Econ Games and give us some feedback about what you experienced today. Uh, we would love to hear from you. You will receive uh, information about the future speaker series. Kendall Ruber is our next one, and she is a data scientist uh, with uh, Yum Brands. Um, she is a, 
econ undergrad and has a master's in data uh, analytics. So that might be something of your interest as well. Thank you once again. Have a great day. See you all.